she was standing in my desk and oh, came up behind and saw that Ruthie and she fell down screaming. I think he was like, like 50. And Christopher, your little brother, I mean, you stabbed him in the neck. What, what has he ever done to you? So he's just a number. Yes. Um, so like I told you when I met you at the jail, my name's Eric. I'm a detective here with Broken Heart Police. And uh, we just want to spend some time, maybe talk and discuss some things and maybe ask you some questions, let you ask us some questions and make sure we're all comfortable with what's going on and then we'll go from there. I was hoping maybe you could kind of just go back at the beginning when all this started and kind of tell me what happened because I need, I need kind of the details so we know and understand what, what you went through and stuff. You guys had talked about murdering. Yeah, and he stopped playing again. Who did you stand? Um, my younger brother, Christopher. Christopher? How old is Christopher? Um, nine, I think. What did you stab him with? Oh, my knife. What, so what was, what was Christopher doing when you stabbed him? He was laying on the bathroom floor. Robert was also stabbing and Robert asked me to go over and help him. So I stabbed him with Christopher and then... Where did you stab him? Oh, side of the neck. Really? Yeah. Okay. You okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. Let me know if you need a break or anything, okay? Find it. So, was Christopher still alive when you stabbed him? Yes. What was he saying and doing? He was just screaming. Screaming. Like, do you have a problem with society too, do you think? No, no I just... Or you were just more like the, the number of people getting killed was kind of interesting and yeah, exciting? Yeah. Okay. So, did you guys have a goal? Did you have a number? I think he went little. Now this is sad. Another kid throwing his life away. Um, he said he they wanted to kill at least fifty people. What? And then he was also talking about as we just heard how that it was exciting killing people and all this and that stuff. I mean, didn't the parents recognize they kid showing different signs or not being normal or being different or? You know, et cetera, et cetera. Didn't they show that they wasn't, you know what I'm saying, acting like their normal selves or the normal little boy or whatever, you know what I'm saying, they grew up expecting they was going to be. Because ain't no parent going to want their kid to grow up to be a killer and to hurt people. They, we always ex be like, oh, well, a doctor, a lawyer, you know what I'm saying? Or we see you interested in this. Blah, 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 this is probably what they're going to be. And so we set a date. So was the plan to use the knives at first on yeah. the family? Because the guns weren't going to be here till later on? Yeah, and the guns would be too loud. Oh, I see. So um, go ahead and use the knives on the family, which obviously mm -hmm. did not go as planned. Yeah. Thank God. Do you guys not like your mom and dad? I mean, most teenagers don't like their parents, so I can understand that. Yeah, I mean, mom's okay, but dad was a little bit. Just a little bit too much. Yes. So, you guys wait in the room. Mm -hmm. Right at midnight, um, my sister basically we did what we planned. I, 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 uh, I got to my desk. Got to roll up, but went up behind her, grabbed her, and slid with her. Really? What did he use? Red knife. Okay. So well, she was standing at my desk, oh, came up behind, and slid with her, and then she fell down screaming. And then he stabbed her some more? When he was stabbing her some more, was it, where was he stabbing her? Her neck. Oh, her neck. Her neck and her stomach. Stomach. Okay. So um, he stabbed your mom with the same knife? Yep, same knife. And where did he stab her? I think in the neck too. Okay. And, um, and no, actually he stabbed her in the neck, pushed her into the kitchen and then together. So with you, she started screaming and ran into the family. Room. And then that's about the time dad came down. They got a little bit of a fight, um, but then eventually, well, got him down and um, I think killed him. Did he cut his throat too? Did you guys talk about being on the news and getting to see each other on TV and stuff? Yeah. What kind of things did you say and talk about? Um, mostly about how we were playing on killing more people. You know, yeah. Talk. And um, we would become famous, we would get on Wikipedia lists. Oh, okay. People. That'd be a big deal, yeah. So I know you're not being completely honest. So who else did you stab? Oh, I stabbed Christopher more than one time. How many times did you stab him? I think twice. Yeah, I got I, um, I to stab mom. You stabbed him mom? Yeah, I got I, I, when she was walking away, I had to, I had to go through the neck, but, you know, like that. Where did you stab her? I had to, I had to go from behind and kind of go by the team. I mean, how do you feel about your mother?
now this is crazy. I'm surprised that they told this gruesome story and they're playing on how they want to be the world's most famous killers and shit. But yeah, they got life in prison. They pleaded not guilty to the charges against them. After telling what they exactly did, how they did it in their plans, they got life in prison with the possibility of parole. Now, I know these are kids and they should have a second chance, but how they just told, how he just told this story, their plans, what they wanted to do, that shit's crazy. And then, I mean, I don't know where these, I don't know. The justice system is all messed up. I mean, I just seen cases where somebody done something not as crazy as this, and they has got life without the possibility of parole. So I guess it just depends on where you at, what kind of judge you have. Um, yeah, this is a crazy situation to hear how they were cool with their parents, but yet, well, they were cool with their mom, their dad was strict, but yet they still hurt everybody, and he still hurt everybody in the household. Today, we're looking at the crazy true stories of teachers who slept with their students. Mary Kay Latorno. Mary was an elementary school teacher in Buren, Washington, who was arrested for having an affair with one of her students, then giving birth to his child twice. Mary Kay first met Vili Fulao when she was his second grade teacher at Shorewood Elementary. She later became his teacher again in the sixth grade, which is when their affair began. Mary Kay was having problems at home, so she turned to Vili for comfort, and their relationship went from platonic to sexual. She was arrested after police discovered the two together in a parked car and realized something wasn't right. She pled guilty to second degree child rape, and while awaiting sentencing, gave birth to Vili's daughter. After accepting a plea agreement, she was only sentenced to six months and was spotted again with Vili just two weeks after she got out so this teacher says she not only couldn't keep she did not only couldn't keep herself away from her one time but she got a motherfucking a cakewalk and she fucking got herself landed in jail for a second time and then not only that she had his baby y'all but i remember they ended up being legally together when he got of age and all this shit and then she had a well they had got a divorce or something and then she later died but she ended up leaving him all her property everything basically so you know what i'm saying um that's how their situation played i end up making a video about this or i, I know i've seen a story about this i just don't know exactly where i've seen it now shelly dufresne and rachel respress Shelly and Rachel were two Louisiana teachers who were arrested after having a threesome with a student. The unidentified victim was 16 when he began having an affair with Dufresne, his 34-year-old English teacher. She had messaged him on Facebook on a day when he was out sick, which quickly escalated into them kissing in her classroom, followed by sex. The relationship culminated with a threesome involving Dufresne, the victim, and Rachel Respress, another teacher at the school. But that night, the victim decided to record a video of Respress while she was sleeping to show his friends on the football team. It was kind of like proof. I told them, but they didn't believe me. Rumors quickly started going around the school, and both teachers were quickly arrested. But a judge later found insufficient evidence to prove what happened, and Shelly Dufresne was able to plead guilty to a reduced charge of obscenity, which only carried a three-year suspended sentence, probation, and a $1,000 fine. I was about to say, how the fuck they have a, how the hell these teachers be building themselves up to come to these students this kind of way? And then for the simple fact, these females had a goddamn threesome with dude or whoever the, t the football teammate was. And I'm like, yep, that's what it was. He was on the football team. So, you know what I'm saying? They was trying to do some crazy shit for him because he probably was a superstar or et cetera, et cetera. But that's still weird knowing that these teachers is confident enough to go to their students for sexual favors. Abby Jane Swagger, 
Abby was a teacher's aide who was arrested for having a wild drug and sex party with underage students in a hotel room. On February 22nd, 2008, police were called to a room at the Clarion Inn where they discovered Schwagner and several 14 and 15 year old kids. They also found beer, marijuana, used condom wrappers, and a naked 17 year old in the bathroom. Schwagner, a 34 year old teacher's aide at the local high school and former exotic dancer, was quickly arrested. Not long after the arrest, a photo leaked showing a naked Schwagner being groped by multiple teenage boys. It was also revealed that weeks prior, she had sex with a 16 year old victim at the same hotel. By the time she made it to trial, she was facing 39 charges that included giving crack cocaine to teenagers and luring underage victims to the hotel for sex. She eventually pled guilty to 11 charges and was sentenced to three to six years in jail. All right, so this lady right here was on some crazy shit. She was a motherfucking exotic dancer. Then on top of that, having all these teenage boys be all up on her fucking giving them drugs, coke, all this shit. Fucking they life up because depending on how heavy they was doing that shit from from other stories and other documentaries and all this other shit that I watched and heard about, a lot of people have a hard time shaking back from them hard drugs. So she should have got more than three to six years in my eye because she up here fucking up teenage lives. You know, messing these people up to where they can, I mean, coke is crack. So, I don't give a fuck how you look at it. They could have a messed up addiction or something because of her. All she got was three to six. That shit don't sit right. She should have got motherfucking five to 20. You know what I'm saying? Pamela Rogers. Pamela was convicted of four counts of sexual battery in 2005 after admitting to an affair with a 13-year-old student at Centertown Elementary School and sentenced to 270 days in county jail with an eight-year suspended sentence. But less than a year after pleading guilty, she was caught sending text messages and explicit videos to the same boy on his father's cell phone. So, she was again arrested on two counts of solicitation and sentenced to seven years in prison. But Pamela couldn't just stay out of trouble. After being released in 2012, she was arrested again for attempting attempting to smuggle contraband cell phones into the prison where she was held and sent right back to jail. Goddamn, Pamela. She didn't fucking turned up, didn't she? She not only was messing with these young folks, but she didn't goddamn went to the motherfucking jail prison and got involved in that prison shit. You know what I'm saying? So she like, bro, I'm the plug, I'm the lick. How the hell do you try to smuggle phones in there? Don't they got like, fucking metal detectors and stuff and she was trying to smuggle a phone in there what the hell she got the plug on how to get uh untraceable phones in there or something oh she just got out of prison how the fuck she gonna try to smuggle phones back in the prison you know what i'm saying deborah lafave Deborah Lefebvre is a former teacher and convicted sex offender who was arrested after having a sexual encounter with a 14-year-old student. Deborah was arrested after her victim's aunt noticed him hanging out with an older woman and alerted his mother. After intense questioning, the boy admitted to having an affair with his teacher, and Deborah was quickly arrested. She also called the boy's mother to smooth things over. I was more thinking of it as being a young girl who just got caught with her boyfriend and we shouldn't piss our parents off. In the investigation, it was revealed that Lefebvre had had sexual encounters with her victim at least four times. She was facing five to 15 years if convicted. But at the last minute, the victim's mother learned that the trial would be covered by Court TV, who would not keep his identity secret. So, Deborah avoided a trial by accepting a plea deal and didn't serve any jail time. Wow, Deborah, looks like you got lucky this time. Uh, damn, she's fucking crazy. Talk about, I looked at it as a little teenage girl and we just got caught by our parents and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you mentally gone, shawty. I don't see how the fuck you was capable of being a teacher if your mind was like that. And dude was 14. He just turned to goddamn teenager. And see, that other situation we watched where they only got like a couple years or three to six and she was doing coke and all this other shit with these teens. And she only got three to six. While this lady got five to 15, 20. But she only got lucky because the mom didn't want her baby to be exposed on full TV. And fuck his life up because of the publicity and the shit that would have happened to him. It could possibly affect him growing up.